Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, it's a tutorial video where I'm going to show you how to ink a cartoon werewolf in Adobe Illustrator. We already drew a jack-o'-lantern and a vampire and there are videos for each of these on my YouTube channel and on my website which is marsdenillustration.com. I also have a Facebook. If you look for Ian David Marsden you can find me. Of course, if you like me, or if you like my page, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And that way you would also get updates whenever I upload a new video or cause some kind of other interstellar um, mayhem. In this um, video now, I am inking the werewolf based on my sketch that I have already done beforehand. And there is a video of me creating the sketch as well. The sketch is on a layer, and the layer has been switched to a template, so it is grayed out to 50%. I am drawing um, vector lines with the brush tool. Uh, brush tools that have been set in the settings to take into account the brush sensitivity pressure sensitivity on the Wacom Intuos that I'm drawing on. Uh, this would also work, sorry, not an Intuos, a Cintiq. This would also work on an Intuos or any other graphics tablet that has pressure sensitivity. Um, it is the pressure that is creating the thickness and thinness of the lines. And uh, this takes a little bit of practice. Um, I've been doing this for many years and I used to actually draw a lot with pen and ink and brushes and that's where you also get a feel for how to make a dynamic line uh, with a thick thickness and uh, to have the thickness where you want it in the right spot. Um, of course now that we have these wonderful digital tools like Adobe Illustrator and other great vector uh, art programs. We can take advantage of the lossless vector lines, which means that uh, no matter what scale you size this at, uh, there are no pixels. It will not start looking faded or gray. And it just looks super crisp. It has many advantages. Of course, the file size is very small too. Sometimes I'll do an incredibly complicated illustration for a double page in a newspaper with, uh, you know, dozens or even hundreds of little things going on all over the place. And um, if I were to send that as a bitmap image in high resolution, it would be a massive file. Uh, whereas if I save that as a PDF file vector, sometimes it's not even one megabyte. And sometimes even considerably smaller than one megabyte. Uh, as you can see, I do follow my sketch lines, but I don't take them completely as written in stone. Uh, if I feel like it, uh, especially if it's a project of my own or where I can take some artistic freedom and license, which I do love to do, then um, I will just use them as a sort of a guideline and then as the brush strokes evolve, <coughs> excuse me, then I will just improvise too. I wanted this werewolf to be, you know, the huge muscular type, not the cuddly cute other type that everybody's familiar with. Uh, so he uh, basically has a bit of a superhero bodybuilder physique. <coughs> get those muscles and uh, to get that strength you want to have lines that do have um, considerable weight uh, along the line somewhere and then you can see for the fingernails <coughs> excuse me I don't smoke by the way I don't know why I'm coughing uh, for the fingernails uh, that I want to be really pointy and sharp then you have a thinner line and uh, less weight to it 
I'm alternating my brush strokes. As you can see, my brush palette. Um, these are mostly brushes that I have created for myself, so I know what they do and, and how they look. Some of them were based on uh, calligraphic brushes, uh, calligraphy brushes uh, that I modified and saved. Uh, you can experiment with these. <clears throat> there are various settings that affect what it's going to look like. Uh, sometimes the brush also picks up on other strokes around it. Uh, this is not always uh, something you want it to do. There I now selected all the lines, saved them as a symbol so that I still have them if I want them. And then I flattened the symbol. And then I did a little trick that I find quite handy is I created a live paint object. And then I expanded that, which basically... Um, does a path outline, uh, a shape that, as you can see, I can pick tiny little things that are overlapping and just delete them. Uh, before I had figured out this trick, <clears throat> I used to go with the eraser tool and just select each line and wipe over the areas that were overlapping, which worked perfectly fine too, except sometimes you would cut a little too much and you wouldn't really notice, but this is very clean and a little faster. A little more professional. If you have a little trick like that, and another little trick and another little trick, suddenly you're saving minutes and then even hours. Now I'm cleaning some of the lines a little bit using the Bezier tool. There, I'm now using the pen tool to draw flat surfaces in white and black. Uh, just... Okay, now we're going to put some detail on the nose. Using the pen tool, I can lay down some nice, solid flat, uh, black uh, areas. In traditional inking, uh, you would have done this with uh, various sizes of uh, brushes, uh, sable brushes and, and pens. Now, in the uh, lovely vector digital uh, age, you can do it like this. This is my method. I don't know if it's going to work for everybody. You could, of course, lay them down with brushes here, too. I like to use the pen tool, outline the area, and then just drop in a solid black surface. I think it looks clean, and uh, it saves a lot of time. I have been using this method for quite a long time, so I already really know pretty much how I want things to look and I know how they are going to look. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's a kind of trial and error thing and uh, once you've been doing it for a while, it comes natural. You can change the color of um, <clears throat> the layer that you're working on. For example, here you can see that it's uh, kind of a purple. Um, depending on what the surface color is that you're working on, um, purple might not be so visible. I'm really, I'm not even looking, uh, frankly, at the outlines because I'm just drawing them. Uh, in my mind, I know where they're going. So it's not even visual almost. But you can change those settings uh, by double-clicking on the layer in Adobe Illustrator. By the way, if uh, you have any questions or anything to any of my tutorial videos, feel free to write a little comment uh, below the YouTube video. I'll be happy to answer them. I might not get to them right away, but I will get to them eventually. Uh, another way to get in touch with me is to find my Facebook page. Uh, look for Ian David Marsden. Uh, like the page, of course, and then you can uh, write comments and messages to me directly there as well. I'm relatively active on there, so I will get your message. I'm talking about uh, questions regarding drawing and art in, in the widest term, not, uh, you know, any home improvement or you know car repair questions
Mainly also because I don't know anything about that and you really would not want to ask me. Thanks for watching and see you soon.